keep on going even if uh, you're not in good shape. Just stay alive and keep on trucking, keep on helping people. My name is Gerald Bro, and I'm 61 years old. I grew up in Oxbury, Ontario until my parents got divorced. My childhood was not a good one. When my parents divorced, um, I was a young age, I can't remember what age, and uh, my dad met uh, a woman and she wanted to get rid of us and, and she almost killed me. After that, we got placed in a um, foster home. I thought it was going to be better in foster homes. Naturally, it's not. I ran away a lot of time. Then finally, I asked them what was the easiest way to get out of that. And she said, if you could find a job and support yourself, will let you go, and that's what I did. I asked my uncle if I could go trucking with him and learn me how to drive a truck. And my uncle did that on one trip. And after that, he told me, he says, well, guess what? Now it's your turn to drive the truck. He says, I'm driving the other one. I had no experience whatsoever. Then after that, I got used to it. And I started to like it. The way I meet my wife was a funny way. I left Edmonton with a load of car. I was going to uh, Kamloops, B.C and at Jasper Park, uh, it was poor raining, and I remember seeing her. She wasn't hiking or nothing, she was just walking, and I stopped and I told her to get in. And then she told me the story of what happened that uh, her stepfather tried to rape her. And she told that to her mom, and her mom called her a slut and get out. And so I said, well, what are you looking? She said, well, I would like to find a job. And I said, okay, I'll give you a job. Uh, you could take care of my house, pass the lawnmower and all that, and I'll pay you. In 1977, we had a little boy. He was a nice little boy. He, he was pretty active. Like, uh, we had to watch him all the time. He loved to be in in situation like I did, getting in trouble. <laughs> that, with her and my son, was the nicest life I could hope for until it ended in 1983. They both died in a car accident. She was going to my mother's place in Vancouver and, and uh, on the Fraser Canyon, a drunk driver was passing trucks and she was between two trucks and he hit her straight on, face to face. There were nothing left uh, up the car. It went down to Fraser Canyon. It took me nine years to get over it. And still today, it still hurt. It's something you don't forget just like that. You know, life is it's too valuable to let it go. After that, 
I said, that's it. No more woman, no more pregnancy. Um, I bought myself a little Snyder, and I said, okay, you're going to be my partner, and we're going to fuck it. was a good dog, though. He could detect cops two miles away. He would start barking in a window. First time he did that, I couldn't figure out what the heck is this problem? I, I don't see nothing. So I let the pedal go, and sure enough, there were a cop car with a radar on. If somebody asked me, do you regret your life? No. I don't. Because I got over my fear. And I kept on living. Now I'm happy. And I met a new friend, Peggy. And she's She's awesome. She's a real friend. You can't ask for a better friend.